Hello everyone, so it's been a couple of weeks since I put out a video, but there's so much to talk about. It's just, you know, I kind of lose track of everything. It's like, whoa, whoa, I I'm only one guy here, you know, uh, I'm not, you know, paid by any corporate chills. I'm not, uh, you know, I don't shill any advertisements, nothing. I don't have anyone working for me. It's just me, although I do have a Telegram group, which, which is extremely helpful <laughs> when it comes to, you know, giving me information about what's going on. Uh, if, if you're not already a member of the Telegram group, if you don't have Telegram, please join Telegram and join the, uh, the group, uh, t.me slash resisting the reset. We have a lot of fun in there. So much good info in there. And that's where I get most of my info, to be honest. It's not even Twitter anymore. Twitter is just garbage now. Um, but anyway, there's so much going on. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, obviously here, uh, Pelosi visiting Taiwan, uh, and, and the... The war drums beating for World War III, which I do think that the global elite, um, they want like a World War III type scenario, especially if it involves cyber attacks, which I think that is something that's impending here in the U.S. and really across the West. We had Klaus Schwab talking about, uh, you know, uh, how, how much worse a cyber attack would be uh, in comparison to a COVID-19 lockdown pandemic. Um, so, you know, I think that's something that's coming along in the agenda. And then we're going to talk a little bit about monkeypox, which I've been talking about now for really, uh, it was like a month and a half ago when I first put out info on that. Um, and you know, that Ki Kissinger affiliated group, I think it was what the, um, nuclear threat initiative that put out, uh, you know, a document years ago, uh, about how monkey, a monkey pox outbreak would happen basically in the middle of 2022. And, and you know, I talked about that and, and now it's, you know, it's ramping up as well. It, it's a, a state of emergency in multiple States here with the monkey pox. And, um, I'm going to talk about the cashless system rolling out with CBDCs. They're really, ramping that situation up too it just never ends you know welcome to the new world order we're going full speed baby we're going in and uh yeah i'm just kind of like I'm, I'm trying to get like i'm trying to get prepared i'm actually moving to new hampshire we're, we're, we're going all in and so yeah let's talk a little bit about this first uh u.s house speaker pelosi arrives in taiwan divide defying beijing Ooh, oh, she is. Oh, look at look at her. She is uh, just the uh, epitome of strength and resilience uh, at 82 years old, uh, drunk on her pills, uh, visiting uh, Taiwan in defiance of, of, of the communist Chinese, which probably own her. I feel like this is all a charade, right? All charade, in my opinion, you know, when I when I look at people like Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, all of these types uh, I, you know, they do, they just so happen to do everything that, that boys bolsters, um, you know, things, uh, for China, really, you know, like they're destroying America. This is exactly what China wants. Uh, you know, at least some forces in China really at the top though, you know, all these people are just, they're, they're about creating a global government guys. This is about a great reset. China's on board. Many people in the U.S., especially the high-level politicians and Democrats like Pelosi is on board. These, there's no difference between any of these groups. This is all charade, right? This is all show and tell. But anyway, we're still going to look at it here. U.S. Speaker Pelosi arrived in Taiwan late Tuesday, becoming the highest-ranking American official in 25 years to visit the self-ruled island claimed by China, which quickly announced that it would conduct military maneuvers in retaliation to her presence. Pelosi flew in aboard a U.S. force uh, passenger jet, jet and was greeted on the same tarmac at Taipei's International Airport by Taiwan's foreign minister and other Taiwanese and American officials. She posed for p photos before her motorcade whisk her motorcade whisked off. <laughs> and uh, she went unseen into the parking garage of a hotel. Uh, her visit ratcheted up tensions between China and the United States because China claims Taiwan as part of its territory. Listen to AP News, like talking to you like you're five years old. Like, like we don't already know this, right? Because China claims, like, like I just love the way they write. Let's say, I feel like these are all like pampered college grads writing for these outlets now. At least like 10 years ago, back when I used to read AP and Reuters for fun because I was a weirdo and a creep. Um, 
like it actually presented news in a more like sophisticated and complex way that like an intelligent mind could actually be stimulated by. Now it's like reading a fifth grade level book, right? Um, her visit ratcheted up tension between China and the United States because China claims Taiwan is part of its territory and it views visits by foreign government officials as recognition of the land of of the island's sovereignty. The Biden administration and Pelosi say the United States remains committed to the so-called one China policy which recognizes Beijing but allows informal relations and defense ties with Taipei, blah, 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 blah. So as this is happening, uh, you know, we have uh, tough talk from China. China slams extremely dangerous U.S. actions in Taiwan as Nancy Pelosi visits island. Um, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're saying it's quote-unquote extremely dangerous, uh, blah, blah, blah. They even said, what do they say here? They uh, they claimed it was like a uh, you know play with fire and you'll get burnt, you know all of this tough talk and now China is conducting military actions, um, in response to the visit and I, I think there was even a Chinese media outlet that said that you know if she was escorted by fighter jets if Pelosi was escorted to Taipei buy fighter jets that they could shoot her down and shoot down the fighter jets. So, you know, they're really talking all this and this is all in, in, in this sort of attempt. Look, guys, they, there is a plan. They, look, I'm not like a conspiracy theorist here, but there are forces. Okay. Look, I know it's not 13 guys in a smoke filled room planning everything for the world. Obviously it's more complicated than that, but it's okay. It's true guys. There are uh, unseen forces, you know, th that, that, benefit from like a World War Three type situation. You know, especially those uh, climate change types that want to uh, reform the entire industrialized war world uh, and your everyday life. They, they want to ban certain things in your life so that uh, so-called, you know, we stop uh, polluting the earth with, with, with our human existence, right? With our carbon, with our chickens and cows, right? They want to ban all that stuff because cows fart too much and it, you know, puts the CO2 in the air. And, you know, a, a crisis really gives them um, a, a sort of a, a position in which people will just listen to them and they, they have excuses to clamp down on certain things in society. Uh, you know, it, well, obviously it gives uh, China a reason to uh, commit a cyber attack on us and then all of a sudden everything is shut down. You know, people uh, uh, grovel to the government for help and, you know, they'll do anything. The uh, federal government or, you know, your draconian state uh, government if you're in a bad state uh anything that these governments say right and you know you'll you'll start getting food rations and all of this stuff the more the food shortages come the more the inflation comes the more uh the uh, impending cyber attack hits you know from one of these foreign enemy nations like china or russia the more the government can step in and the great reset can happen right it's about uh reforming the world in their image creating order out of chaos you know it's similar to what happened after world war ii with the Bretton woods agreement and all of this with after world war ii you had this opportunity to create a new world order um and they want to they want that to happen again they want like a part three i guess you could say or yeah part three at world war one world war two now now they want like this part three our opportunity for a great reset um you know, this is this is pretty obvious. If you watch my channel, you know this is all real. This is very admitted as well. It's not like a conspiracy theory. So, um, and what's really interesting, the Taiwan presidential office was hit by a cyber attack uh, ahead of Pelosi's visit. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe it was China. Who knows? But at the same time okay while this is going on while they're they're you know getting ready to lay the groundwork for world war three with the russia situation ukraine the breadbasket of the world all of a sudden there's food shortages coming this fall with china and the the rhetoric ramping up we also have another pandemic happening and it is the monkeypox outbreak and if uh, if you didn't know, right, uh, I'm sure if you're watching this and, you know, you're a homosexual, you might be aware that you're at risk of this. 
Okay, so uh, you know, it's no secret at this point that this is pretty much an STD at, at, at this point. Now, I don't know if like the whole narrative uh, will shift and all of a sudden it will become, um, you know, more of a uh, average person type of thing instead of being spread at like these gay orgies. Um, but you know, this is something that they're definitely talking about a lot more. California has come out and declared a state of emergency over monkeypox following New York and Illinois. Uh, California's declaration comes after Illinois declared a public health emergency earlier Monday. New York declared a state of disaster emergency in response to the outbreak late, late Friday. Uh, the U.S. has reported nearly 6,000 cases of monkeypox across 48 states, Washington, D.C., and Puerto Rico, according to the CDC, California, Illinois, and New, and New York, home to the nation's, nation's three largest cities, have reported 47% of all confirmed monkeypox infections in the U.S. California, well, we know why it's spreading there, right? Uh, uh, WHO, uh, the World Health Organization, which uh, here uh, on YouTube they are the uh, the gods, and we uh, we sac we commit sacrifices uh, to honor the gods uh, here at Resisting the Reset, and the the sacrifices we commit are are <laughs> we 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 uh, give to the WHO are our truths we're not allowed to say, right? We have to sacrifice. Um, really important truths to the gods of the WHO to make sure that we don't say things that offend them. Um, of course, I'm obviously joking here, but the WHO recommends gay and bisexual men limit sexual partners to reduce the spread of monkeypox. Now, it's kind of funny because at the same time, while they're sort of admitting that this is, a, this is uh, we got to, you know, we got to blame the, the fudge packers for this. Uh, am I allowed to say that here on YouTube? I don't know. Uh, while they're sort of saying that, you know, this is a, uh, you know, a fudge packing situation, um, you know, they're also saying that we shouldn't blame the fudge packers. So, um, I don't know. It's kind of like this, this weird, like, I don't know. It, it, you know, contradictory narrative, you know, it's the same thing with with everything. You know, how many contradictory narratives did we have with the previous so-called pandemic thing, right? I, you know, it's just so many, so many. It's countless at this point. Two years of just uh, cognitive dissonance for the average person. So uh, key points here from the WHO, men who have sex with men are at the highest risk of infection right now for monkeypox according to the who about 99 percent of cases are among men and at least not this 99 percent whoa and at least 95 percent of those patients are men who have sex with other men according to the who official rosemont lewis uh who chief tedros uh i can't say that name said men uh who have sex with men should consider limiting their sexual partners to lower the risk of infection and reduce the spread. Good luck with that. Yeah, good luck with convincing the gay the gays to stop going to orgies. They, they're not gonna stop. You know, they 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 are heathens. Okay, uh, they they are the epitome of Sodom and Gomorrah. And we're you know they you know I'm just saying I'm just saying look look hey I have nothing against the gays but uh, yeah they're committing sin. Okay. So, uh, the WHO chief called on media, public health authorities, and government to fight stigma and uh, discrimination, which he said will only fuel the outbreak. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Fight. Well, you know, it's kind of funny because it's kind of like, well, uh, exactly. This is what I'm talking about. It's like this uh, cognitive dissonance. It's like blame the gays, but don't blame the gays. Okay, what? Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> I don't even know. And, you know, here, here's the um, here's the secret, right? Uh, you know, it, so, some of these gays, I'm sure, are bisexual. And then, you know, what if they start having sex with these women? And then these women are going on Tinder and having sex with dudes. And then it spreads within the straight population. And that's really the, um, you know, I think that's the narrative that may play out this winter, you know. And then you'll have, uh, they're, they're already preparing 
Um, and they've already ordered a whole bunch of new smallpox vaccines, which also supposedly, uh, I guess, according to, I, I don't know, look, double check this. I don't know what I'm allowed to say here. They supposedly protect against monkeypox too, these smallpox vaccines. And I've heard, I think, that you're actually not even able to get a smallpox vaccine unless you're like a gay person living in one of these cities. <laughs> it's like, and they're just ordering more of these, right? They're coming from, I think, like Denmark or something. This company from Denmark, I reported on it like a couple months ago. And and um, it, it, just look at my videos from this. It, like a couple months back, the monkey po- I put out a couple monkeypox videos. There's also a um, like a document from the NTI Nuclear Threat Initiative, which was put out years ago, or at least I think it was like a year and a half ago or something. Um, about how there would be a monkeypox outbreak starting in the middle of 2022. Literally, they said that in one of their simulations, right? Um, you know, it's really interesting how, just like how with uh, Event 201, they, it, which was in like 2019 of 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 uh, October of 2019, where they predict basically a COVID-19 outbreak. <laughs> And then it happens, you know, they run these simulations of like things that will happen and then they just happen because these are just really smart people that are able to see things before they happen. They are in touch with like the Akashic records and you just see the future or something, you know, they are like in tune psychically with with uh, the higher forces and they just they, they, they receive they receive from the higher forces and then they. Um, they, then they run simulations because they, you know, the the gods are telling them to do it, and uh, and they just, I, of course, I'm like joking here, but you know what I'm saying? It's like somehow these people know. I don't know. It's weird, or they're just really, they're just really good at their jobs, right, guys? They're just really good at their jobs. Um, so yeah, so we're switching gears a little bit here to more of the culture war i guess you could say uh now with with demi lovato in case you didn't hear right in case you didn't hear about demi lovato she actually um or he wait i don't know she he i'm not sure so she was a he but now she's back to a she so demi lovato uh changed her pronouns to he so he or or it i'm not really sure but it was something else before and now she is back to she her again um, and the, she she went on to say, quote, I'm such a fluid person. Aw. So in addition to new personal updates involving her pronouns, the sing- singer has a new vibe for her eighth studio album. Holy. F- OK, that's a stupid name for an album. But anyway, I also think the fact that she's putting out an album and, and coming out with this uh, tells me that this is probably like a promo in some ways, you know, this is a great way for people, you know, I should just start changing my, oh wait, I did change my pronouns, I forgot, I'm a lesbian, um, like if you go to my Twitter, I, my pronouns actually are she, her, just so you guys know, and I, I, I still am attracted to women, but I'm all, I'm a woman, and I, you know, I, I still have a penis and all that, and like I haven't changed anything about me, because you know, I don't agree with this cultural narrative that women should have long hair and vaginas, uh, you know, or boobs or anything like that. Uh, you know, who says women can't have penises and short, you know, hair and like be like somewhat muscular and stuff like me. I'm a woman, right? I'm still attracted to women, but, um, so I'm lesbian. So those are my pronouns, she, her, but I might just change it back to he, him. If I feel like, you know, a video going viral or something, maybe the media will talk about it. Um, although they probably think I'm, I'm joking or being facetious, but I'm not, you know, my, my pronouns right now are she, her. Uh, so, you know, I might have to change that. I don't know. So, uh, you know, the other day I had a dream. I was like, uh, uh, uh like a, a telephone pole. Um, so I might just change it to, I don't know what it, maybe it, it's, uh, because I, some, you know, I feel like maybe I'm a telephone pole deep down. I don't know. Well, anyway, so Demi Lovato has announced a personal change to the singer and actress whose new album, holy f***. Um, that's just such a stupid name for an... I mean, I'm not even just saying that because, like, it's really stupid. I mean, that's a really stupid name for an album. Holy fudge! Like, I'm not going to say... Because I don't know if YouTube, like, sort of censors just for... 
saying it. And plus, it's spelled. Di- I mean, you can see it on the screen. It's like F V C K. Like, oh, it's spelled. It's spelled weird. So edgy. Oh, it's spelled funny. Oh, wow. That really captures the imagination of the youth, Demi Lovato. I'm sure. And then, oh yeah, it's just. It's so edgy and so cool. Uh, it comes out August 19th, and her pronouns now include she, her. In a recent interview on the Spa, Spout podcast, Lovato said, I've actually adopted the pronouns of she, her again. <sighs> this comes a little after a, uh, over a year of her, the confident singer shared a video to her social media platforms where the 29-year-old announced she identified as non-binary and would use they, them pronouns. Oh, man. I, I, you know, I really do think this is like, this is like a Hunger Games, like, uh, like cosmopolitan sort of upper class trend. Uh, I don't know, man. It's kind of weird. It's kind of like how, it, 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 in many ways, obviously, there's so many agendas that play into this. Me and like my buddy Jeff C, we were talking about it a long time ago. This was back in like 2015. we like, we would go on and on in live shows about the, you know, the LGBT agenda, <laughs> like a long time ago, even before the culture war really started and started ramping up. And you know, there's so much that plays into this. But you know, I also think it, they, they've they've created this sort of narrative and this atmosphere where it's like the upper middle class city cosmopolitan type sort of, uh, and many also like a lot of the younger teenagers. You know, it used to be like you were emo to be edgy and like hate your life. Now you're kind of like, well, now I'm just gonna change my gender. It's like this new. It's a, I don't know if it's a fad. I think they it's a fad. It's like a uh uh like a like a fashion statement almost to be, you know, trans. Uh but also it, it's like a a cosmopolitan uh virtue signal and it, there's so many other agendas behind it though that I'm not really going to talk about right this second. Obviously, you know, depopulation uh, just total debauchery, you know, uh, the satanic agenda and all this uh, that goes into it. Um, but they've created an atmosphere where it's catching on amongst the uh, celebrities and all this. You know, you had, who was it? Elliot Page, Ellen Page, whoever that is now, also stating uh, that they are a, a boy. They chopped off, like, I think they I think they had a mastectomy and all this. And, and I, you know, n- now they identify as Elliot Page, and you're not allowed to even say the word Ellen Page on Twitter now, or they'll ban you. And I think they banned, what, Jordan Peterson? I think it was. What, 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 I think that's what, it, yeah. They banned Jordan Peterson for even mentioning the fact that it was Ellen Page and not Elliot Page and calling him or her. I mean, and watch just in like a year from now, she'll be regretting it and she'll be saying I'm, I'm her again. And, it, you know, it's a real shame because she was actually really cute. I remember Juno, which was a, a story about, about abortion. It was this movie. Uh, I don't remember how it played out, but I remember it was like about this teenage girl who got pregnant and was debating getting an abortion and she was really cute in that movie back in those days in the you know 2000s and the early 2010s man ellen page was really cute you know um and now it's really sad because you see a cute girl especially you know it's it's one thing if one of those butch you know sort of like ugly lesbians decides to go trans and call themselves a boy it's like who cares you know i don't care but if it's like a cute girl that at one time you had a little bit of a crush on maybe when you were a teenager or something uh, or if it's someone you know, you might have been sort of attracted to, and then they all of a sudden cut off their boobies and they, um, you know, start calling themselves a boy, and then they develop masculine features and start taking, you know, sterilization drugs or testosterone, whatever it is. It's really kind of sad, you know. It, um, good thing Demi Lovato was never really attractive, but anyway. There's now a new German law that allows citizens to change their official gender once a year, every year. Well, that's so progressive of them. I'm really happy about that. Um, um, so, uh, you know, I might have to move to Germany. I don't know if telephone pole would be, like, included in that. Um, I still have to figure out what the pronouns would be for that. I really got really to become in touch with my inner Gnostic, you know, upper... 
um, uh, you know, spirit guide to tell me like, uh, like what the, um, uh, pronouns for that would be, you know, because, um, I do, I think I'm really starting to think I'm a telephone pole. So I'm just saying like, uh, but this German law luckily, um, will, <laughs> okay. So let's just under the self determination act, any individual who identifies as transgender intersex, or non-binary will be able to change their gender by simply paying a visit to a registry office and filling out a form. That's freaking awesome, man. That's so cool. Yeah, and, but only once a year. Well, well, first of all, well, why once a year? Actually, you know, this is not progressive enough. This isn't progressive. Because what if your gender fluid to the point where it changes week to week or month to month? And this is discriminatory toward those people. It really is. I mean, I totally take back everything I said. I'm, I don't think this is awesome. I think this is awful. These are bigots. The, they're not including the gender fluids who are changing more frequently. I mean, look at Demi Lovato. I, I don't know. That could have been under a year, right? Well, what would she do in this case? She'd be screwed. Uh, I mean, this is oppression. This is oppression, you know, and this is, um, this is awful. I didn't realize, uh, you know, I have, I, ha I guess I... It was my unconscious bias showing when I was excited to see this law. Now, now I'm starting to realize this is extremely, extremely. Um, uh, this is like Nazi stuff. This is Nazi stuff. Like we have Nazis in the government in Germany now that are um, that are far right wing, and they uh, only once a year are they letting people change their gender and pronouns. That's awful. Um, there will be no requirement for anyone seeking a name or gender change to undergo any sort of surgical operation, hormone therapy, or psychiatric consult. Well, that's good, but only once a year is, is far right. Uh, under the Self-Determination Act, any individual who identifies as transgender, intersex, or non-binary will be able to change their gender by simply paying a visit to a registry office and filling out a form. Well, why should they even have to fill out a form, you know? That what if they can't spell or write or what if they're disabled, you know? Um, seriously, you know, or what if they don't speak English? What what, what if like? I hope they're providing translators and, and and writers for them to fill out this form, and pens. What if they can't afford a pen? What if they can't see? What if they're blind, disabled, and transgender? The gender fluid. I mean, like this is this is just so evil. Uh, under the law, which is expected to pass in Parliament before it goes on a summer break, uh, individuals will no longer have to submit a medical report or obtain a, a, a court order to change their name and gender. <laughs> well, I'm sure there actually could be uh, like some real trans people who um, went through that process already of like getting the mastectomy or whatever, you know, the weenie chop, as, uh, as Marjorie Taylor Greene would say. And they went through all these steps and they're on hormone treatment and they went to the psychiatric uh uh medical consult and they did all these steps and now they're sort of like well i kind of did all that for nothing now they're all now you're telling me all i had to do is fill out a form oh look at this for the disabled the law is humiliating we will finally replace it with a modern law of self-determination the self-determination act will improve the lives of transgender people and recognize gender identity or diver diversity reportedly uh said family minister lisa paws in many areas society is further ahead of legislation as a government we have decided to create a legal framework for an open diverse and modern society oh <sighs> Wow, just so righteous, um, except not enough, right? This is far right. The fact that it's only once a year, far right. Um, meanwhile, here's a bit of a segue, but this is pretty important. This is actually very concerning on some real stuff right, right here. Very, very concerning. We have a, a couple of Second Amendment violations. What the federal government is doing now, especially in the wake of uh, the Supreme Court defeat, of, of the shall issue, may issue uh, situation with, with permit permits, uh, license to carry. Um, uh, we have we have a, a couple of situations where, where the government is declaring anybody who is pro-Second Amendment, uh, flies Gadsden flag, or revolutionary war imagery, 
uh, declaring us all as extremists. Um, and I also have another thing we got to talk about with the Second Amendment. Very, very important. So, this is a, a Project Veritas uh, reveal. On Tuesday, Project Veritas released leaked documents from the FBI out, out, outlining um, symbols they say are commonly used by, quote, anti-government or anti-authority violent extremists, noting specifically militia violent extremists. MVE. They even abbreviated it. Ooh. Uh-oh. They're getting serious, guys. When they're abbreviating it, oh, look out. Um, the leaked document obtained through an FBI whistleblower uh, lists numerous symbols, historic references, common phrases, and military networks that militia violent extremists may use or associate with. The following symbols are used by anti-government or anti-authority violent extremists, specifically MVE symbols are often uh, found on propaganda, online platforms, memes, merchandise, group logos, flags, tattoos, uniforms, etc. Widespread use of symbols and quotes from American history, especially the Revolutionary War, exists within MVE networks. Historic and t contemporary military themes are common for MVE symbols, the FBI internal documents reads. And this is... Um, this is why I don't really have much of that. I actually have a giant Gadsden flag, but and I, in case some of you might remember, if you've been subscribers for a long time, I used to sometimes film videos in front of, front of it, and I haven't done that since like 2014 or 15. But I used to back when I back when I lived with my parents, right when I first started the channel. It's like 24, 25 years old. Uh, I, there was a room like next to the room I would usually fil film in uh, or, or create videos in. And sometimes I'd go on camera in front of this big Gatson flag. I still have it. I should actually, I should probably hang it up in my new place when I moved to New Hampshire. But, you know, I, I'm not one to like, you know, have a bumper sticker like this uh, or, or although I, I do sort of, uh, I'm okay with maybe wearing a shirt or a hat that has something like that. Um, but, you know, especially involving yourself in a militia, these types of things, they, they could just, uh, they could just, you're, you, a lot of times you're better being incognito. And then especially in joining a militia, a lot of the militia groups are infiltrated by feds. But I do not, you know, disavow, like, you, you joining uh, like like a like a a militia of people. I don't know. A militia is such a loaded term. Like just friends, right? Uh, a group of friends that you trust that you know. Um, you know, shooting and training and doing all that stuff. That's actually I I would advocate for that. But these sort of organized militia groups, I'm a little skeptical of them. And I think a lot of them are in infiltrated by feds. If you're going to get involved in a group like that, make sure the people you know, people you trust, people you're familiar with, and be very on guard for types outside that you don't know well that are especially advocating violence. I mean, obviously, those are feds. Okay, guys? Well known. So, that being said, uh, the FBI... Um, are now declaring these symbols um, uh, extremists. Uh, included in these symbols is, quote-unquote, 2A, which is Second Amendment, with the FBI saying, quote, uh, violent uh, extremists justify their existence with the Second Amendment due to their mention of the well-regulated militia as well as the right to bear arms. Warrior culture, as well is uh, listed military themes, both historical and contemporary with the examples of Spartans and Valhalla and Mol Molon Lob, which translates to the come and take it from Greek. I, I love that kind of stuff. The memes, uh, we, we share them sometimes in telegram, you know, these sort of historical references to, uh, old European culture and warrior culture. Um, and sort of combining that in sort of a meme format with, with um, more a, a more contemporary take on like you know the Second Amendment and stuff like that, I think that's all great. I mean, I don't know why they, they're saying this is extremist rhetoric. 
uh, I get, well, obviously I do know why. It's because the government is the enemy of the people. They don't want us to have freedoms, right? They don't want us to be able to defend ourselves. They want us to rely on them for uh, defense, for uh, you know, uh, protection, and they want to be able to push us around. This is why they want to take away our Second Amendment. This is why they're uh, making us uh, "quote unquote" violent extremists in their in their databases. Right? This is why they're deeming us as like a, th- a threat to the United States. This is all a, a campaign against really just average American people, especially like white guys, right? Who honestly want to protect their family, want to protect their uh, themselves from criminals and tyrannical government. You know, this is what it means to be an American, and they hate it. Um, and it goes on here. The document also lists a number of historical symbols, including the Gadsden flag, the Liberty Tree, the Betsy Ross flag, as well as Revolutionary War imagery from the American Revolution that give the nation its freedom. The FBI lists a number of common phrases used by militia extremists, which include when tyranny becomes law, rebellion becomes duty. That's such a, like a boomer phrase. You know, there's got to be millions of people who have like shared memes like that. There's got to be millions of Americans who have shared memes like that, like throughout the years. I'm pretty sure I've shared a meme like that, probably not in a long time, because you know th- this is it's kind of like a boomer meme. But that that was something I remember, even the, in the circles of people who were into uh, more dissident type of uh, political ideologies, like 10 years ago, like the whole Ron Paul movement. You saw people sharing stuff like that all the time on Facebook and stuff back when Facebook was a little less censorious. You know, we're talking like 2011, 2012. Um, these were the phrases that were thrown around all the time by average people. Um, and still, I'm still, they still are, but mostly it's like Gen X and boomers now sharing those types of phrases. Well-regulated American militia and I will not comply. I will, I will not comply. I mean, that's like the most American pro American phrase you could say. Like that is what it means to be a, a human resisting tyranny. And that's not even a violent thing. Nonviolent noncompliance is like the epitome of the best type of resistance there is. I mean, that is how you defeat them by not complying and being nonviolent. That's how you defeat any tyrannical government, literally. Um, and you do that in mass scale and that's how you win. And this is what I would totally advocate for. Just total nonviolence and total noncompliance of draconian, tyrannical uh, edicts. Anyways, uh, yeah. So, I mean, that's uh, the new the new thing that the FBI is declaring as extremist. Just basically pro-American. If you're pro-American, you're an extremist now. Just uh, literally millions, of, the tens of millions of Americans they just deemed as extremists. Gadsden flag, I will not comply. <laughs> the Second Amendment. Okay, okay, guy. Like, good luck. Good luck demonizing literally over half the country. Like 70% of white guys. Like, literally. <laughs> like, and, and then it's not just white guys, it's, it's, especially now. It's like the, the whole Second Amendment thing is taking off in, 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 in every type of community now. Um, it's, it's very, very, uh, very diverse. Um, it, is, it is mostly guys, but now many, many girls too, you know, um, exercising their Second Amendment rights and just understanding the value of the Second Amendment, of the First Amendment, of the Constitution, and, and your rights as an American. Um, and more here. This is very disconcerting. A Department of Commerce Census Bureau requesting sale, sales records from gun holster companies. Wow. See, like, they're kind of panicking, I feel like. They're really trying to get records of of everyone who owns a gun. And it's like, I feel like they're trying to do this. They must be trying so hard because gun ownership is, is skyrocketing. Like, the amount of people getting their first guns or getting their uh, license to carry. Um, half the states now actually have constitutional carry anyway. You don't even need a permit. And people are just buying guns in droves. And it's becoming so popular. It's almost like, it's almost at this point, kind of like, uh, there's a lot of old school gun guys that are like, Ah, I kind of wish this was more underground again, but like back in the early 2000s where not everybody was going to the shooting range because these places are getting crowded now. You can't find any like gun clubs or gun ranges. 
uh, especially outdoor ranges, you know, it's tough to find in many areas areas because they're all full, right? Especially these outdoor gun clubs, they, they, they fill up so quick now. And it's like, you know, there's so many noobs, you know, it's like, it's like when, when a bunch of new people buy the Xbox and start playing call the new call of duty and all the people that were playing for like months and testing it out are like, Oh, who are all these noobs? Now, now the system's crashing. And now, you know, I can't, uh, you know, uh, I, I can't play with, with, with the, the guys who actually know what they're doing, you know? So that's kind of like what it is. So I feel like the government here, the census bureau, whatever, is really racing full force to try to get information and all these new gun owners, especially in the constitutional carry states that don't keep records of any of it, where you don't need a permit. And this is why they're doing this. Um, why would the Census Bureau requ request cu customer records from gr American gun holster companies? That is the question Amoland News is asking. Several major holster manufacturer providers received notices from the Department of Commerce Census Bureau requesting their order numbers, product descriptions, and where the items were being shipped. So shady. So shady. A few holster companies has, have refused to turn over the requested information to the federal government, as they should as they should, which is a good thing. And I think maybe they're doing this because maybe they didn't have very much luck with the gun companies or the gun shops, you know? They come to the gun shops, and the gun shops know better. They're like, all right, well, if I don't have to do this, I'm not going to give you any information on any of our customers because, I mean, if you own a gun shop, you have a good idea of the dangers of overreach of federal government, obviously, because uh, they're trying to ban the gun shops. They're trying to put them out of business and they're trying to ban guns and, and, and keep an eye on all the gun owners. So, but now, so now they're going to the holster companies who maybe have a little less stake. Maybe they think they'd have better luck with that. And some of them are saying no. Many of them are apparently. I, I don't know. But some of them are saying yes too. Uh, JM4 Tactical and On Your Six Holsters. Um, uh, a few of them uh, came out and said this, we will never turn over any information on our customers to the government, no matter the cost to us. Uh, to do so would violate our core beliefs. We need to stand up to overbearing government. Our customers can rest assured that their information is safe with us. Now, this is just a couple holster companies saying this. I'm sure there are many turning over the information. So we got to be really, really careful. Um, you know, just be really careful. Make sure... Um, Make sure you trust the holster company you're buying from and that they're not giving your information to the federal government. Okay, so, um, you know, in the wake of all of this uh, from the federal government, um, you know, trying to spy on you, trying to figure out who you are and what you're doing and whether or not you own a firearm, uh, we can trust them. Uh, we can trust the experts, of course, though, when it comes to infectious disease. You know, it's really interesting here. Um, you know, the, the whole the COVID just debacle, it's, it's really... It's really being spelt out now and people will just conveniently forget what we went through the past two years and you know we're just going to pretend like it never happened i guess but many of us are still looking and seeing what these people are saying i mean i mean this will go down in history is like the biggest i can't even say it right i don't know i don't know I, youtube is still like going by rules that uh that that change every day but still like some of the rules are from like 2020 so i don't know what i'm allowed to say but Dr. Burks, the expert, the right-hand man to the Lord and Savior himself, um, uh, <laughs> Dr. Fauci, um, Dr. Burks uh, came out and said that she knew the whole time, that they knew the whole time, that the COVID vaccines would not protect against infection. In case you all don't remember, when they first came out with the, these things in the late 2020, early 2021, the narrative was that it absolutely would protect against infection that's what they were saying and i'm going to show you proof of that that's what the media was was spelling out remember joe biden himself said it joe biden himself said if you take the vaccine you will not get COVID. he literally said that there's plenty i mean you just look it up it's it's everywhere i've played it before in previous um you know videos and shows and all that but anyway dr burks came out and said that they knew the whole time that it wouldn't protect against infection so uh let's check it out here Mm, this is on Neil Cavuto. Uh, I 
Um, I did want to get your take on a lot of people looking at the president now having this and all these people who have been fully vax vaccinated and, and boosted and all of that, and they're getting it. The 20 percent or so of Americans who have not been vaccinated might look at that doctor and say, well, why bother? Why bother? What do you what do you tell them? Well, if you're across the South um, and you're in the middle of this wave, what's going to save you right now is Paxlovid. But once we get through this wave during that law, you should get vaccinated and boosted because we do believe it will protect you, particularly if you're over 70. I knew these vaccines were not going to protect against infection. And I think we overplayed the vaccines and it made people then worry that it's not going to protect against severe disease and hospitalization. It will. But let's be very clear. 50% of the people. There you go. So, th I mean, they knew the whole time. They lied. And it's just like how Dr. Fauci came out and admitted that, you know, at the whole beginning of the pandemic, he remember when he said that, and this is his quote, not mine. He said that, uh, you know, according to Dr. Fauci, he said in 2020, and the science changed on this, of course, WHO, listen to them. They're the experts, the uh, the gods that we must worship here on YouTube. But Dr. Fauci did say that, you know, you shouldn't wear a mask. That's what he said. But then he came back and he retracted that. And he said later that he lied on record. This is what he claims. He claims that he lied. At the beginning of the pandemic, when he said that, knowingly lied, so that the, uh, this is what he claims, so that the doctors and nurses could use the masks, so that they would have masks. And, you know, you, uh, when he went on the news and he was telling people not to wear masks and all this, he was, t he said he, he had to lie so that the doctors could, could wear the masks and stuff because they needed them more and they didn't have enough masks for everybody. Um, so uh, these are liars, knowingly lying. Okay. She just said exactly that we lied. Okay. They lied to you and now there are unspeakable things happening, unspeakable things being reported in regards to people who took this shot, unspeakable, thi unspeakable things that I literally cannot speak about happening every day right now and more and more information is coming out on that and it's all because of lies it's all because of the, the this lie and her and Fauci definitely inferred at the very least that this stuff would prevent you from getting COVID that's what a lot of them were all saying that the vaccine would absolutely prevent it just like if you get the, you know, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Tetanus shot. You'll, you won't get tetanus, right? Like th this type of protection. That's what they were touting. That's what they were putting out there. That, and this is what the media was saying. So Pfizer. Pfizer announcing this week that real world evidence coming out of Israel shows that this vaccine was 94% effective in preventing transmission of asymptomatic COVID-19. There, of course, has been a concern that vaccinated people could still get COVID-19 and spread it, maybe be, you know, an asymptomatic carrier. So what does this finding mean for that concern? Oh, I think it's, it's really something that is very good and we're all excited to see it. I would say I think this vaccine is my gut feeling is, is that this vaccine is prevent infection and therefore will prevent transmission. But to see actual data like the one that is coming out of Israel, which has a significant number of their population already immunized, it's really reassuring. And I think having a vaccine that prevents transmission is really critically important. That's what that's the information they're putting out there. Uh, Dr. Bur Burks, though, knew the whole time that that wasn't the case. Why were they putting out all this info? Why was the media saying all of this? Why were the experts saying all of this? Why was Joe Biden himself saying if you get vaccinated, you can't catch COVID? I mean, there's just video after video here I could play of, of experts, so-called, and media pundits. That, I mean, obviously, you know, like, this is like, guys, this is like 101, like, just, I'm just so sick of it. I'm just, I, I still see, like, the COVID thing, and I just still get, I'm still pissed off at what they did to us and our people. They they destroyed everyone's life. They are the most evil, degenerate scum 
ever in the history of humanity. I hate these people. I hate them so much. Um, I hope they're brought to justice for what they've done to us. They destroyed so many lives, locking everything down, forcing people to get the you know what. And, and I'm just so sick of it. And I just want them brought to justice fully. I, I, I want it overdone. Like I want them I want them to be fully brought to justice. Fully. Fully. In the most extreme way. Okay? I'm so done with it. Anyways. That's it. That's all I got to say about this. Let me know what you think. It's been press. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. If you want to become a Patreon member, links for that in the description below. Any amount helps. And, uh, you know, we're going to keep doing live shows um, eventually. But right now, I probably got to get a new computer somehow. I don't even have the money to do it. But because this one shits the bed half the time. So, you know, during live shows, I can't even do a live show anymore because my computer shits the bed. So we're just that's why I'm doing a video instead of a live show. Um, but we're going to keep going. We're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep doing it the best we can. So, I got you know, uh, you got the Patreon and all that, you know, crypto links. But also, if you can, join the Telegram group. It's a lot of fun. Uh, follow me on Gab and Twitter as well. And like, share, and subscribe, and share this video. Um, also on BitChu, Odyssey, and Rumble. I'll be posting this there too. And, you know, definitely go over there, you know, in case I'm banned on here on YouTube. Other than that, it's been press. Keep your head up, stay real, and no fear.